But when lubricates, he doesn't just take a sip. Mm -hmm. You need a little satisfaction. So God also must need that satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So he takes some extra water to go down. Feel nice. Because he's like us. If you feel nice, you also feel nice. But what goes in must come out. Hmm? All the, everything he goes in doesn't remain there. He must have a way out. So your God, can you imagine? So I said he made man. And he put them in the garden. With the instruction. Your, your concept of God. We are there describing the concept of God. Anthropological. He's thinking of God like a man. That's in his Bible. And this is Judeo-Christian tradition. The Jews and the Christians all they have based their ideas upon this book, the Bible. Judeo-Christian. He calls it Judeo-Christian. So, he creates, he puts them in the garden. Adam and Eve. With instructions. Eat anything and everything in the garden. Except that tree. In the midst of the garden. The fruit of that tree. Thou shalt not eat. Because the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Mar jayda to mar jayda. I'll kill you. Or it might be poisonous to die. The day you eat, you're going to surely die. Shaitan seems to have overheard that. That dialogue between Adam and God. So he tells Eve, he says, you know that tree, the fruit is very good to eat. If you eat that, you're going to live forever. You shall not surely die. The word of God shall surely die. He just adds the word not. You shall not surely die. And Adam and Eve, they add. And Adam lived after that for 930 years, says the Bible. The God said, you're going to die. The devil said, you shall not die. Who's speaking the truth? Shaitan or God? The Bible says, no, who's speaking the truth? Shaitan is speaking the truth. Because Adam lived for 930 years. God lied. This God lied in the Bible. He says, you're going to die, and he didn't die. live for 930 years. That means God was lying. He was bluffing. 930 years he lived. But when Adam and Eve act, they realized that they were naked. They were naked all along. But they were innocent like little babies, little children. When you are five-year-old, four-year-old, you're playing with your sister naked in the tub. Nothing wrong with it. You don't know what's what. Your sister doesn't know what's what. But as you grow older, you realize that it's not done. Separation. So Adam and Eve were grown up people, mature, mature. But in the mind they were like little babies. They didn't know what was what. As soon as they act, they realize that hey, we are different. Each of us are different from the other. Huh? We have sex sexual parts, sexual organs. Ooh. So they started plucking leaves to cover themselves up. And the book says, and Adam heard the footsteps of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, in the late afternoon. Or Adam heard his footsteps. Boom. 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 Adam heard the footsteps of God walking. I'm only reading your book, man. And Adam heard the footsteps of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. But I say, you know, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, he says he's God. The second person of the Trinity in the New Testament, he says that God is spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit, not in form, shape or size. Now when spirits walk, how do you hear the footsteps? Huh? Even if the spirit is a million miles long, how do you hear the spirit's footsteps, you tell me? So he must be like a gorilla, like King Kong. No, no. That you can hear his footsteps, and Adam hears, and he gets hide away. He must be like a mighty King Kong. You know King Kong? Have you seen King Kong? I saw it. First time when the sound came out, it came on sound. Shh. So realistic. Unbelievable. I have to believe everything I see. When I see that, that girl, that lady, in that King Kong's, that monkey's gorilla's hand like that, and I can see she's cringing. You know? I believe. I said, how did they take these pictures? How did they know this? I didn't know. About trick photography, what they can do on film. I didn't know. But I say, look at it, man. And something like King Kong, bigger than King Kong, walking in the garden, boom, boom, boom. Your God, that. That's your God. And Adam hides himself away in the bushes. So God comes along and he stands and searches for Adam and Eve. I thought he's all knowing God. He knows everything. He's all seeing. He sees everything. But no, this God doesn't. He can't see. So he shouts, I'm only reading your book, man. Your holiness, I'm reading your book. Your book says, 
he can't find Adam and Eve. So he said, Adam, Adam, where are thou? Tu kaha hai? Adam, Adam, tu kaha hai? <laughs> Can you believe it? This all-knowing God, the all-seeing God, he doesn't know where Adam and Eve were. Or maybe he knew, he knew, he knew. No, no, let's give him the benefit of the doubt, he knew. But, but, but he was playing a game. You see, according to the Christians, they're telling us that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost were in the heavens for billions of years. They were alone, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alone, nothing, no creation, nothing. Father. And what were they doing? What were they doing? For billions of years, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, what are they doing? They did doing everything. Father says one plus one plus one equals one. The Son says yes, yes, Daddy. And the Holy Ghost says yes, Papa. Yes, yes. He said, two times two is five. So the son says, yeah, daddy, yes, papa. Man, damn it all, if you keep on doing ditto, 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 for millions of years, you get bored to death. Wallah. He is like, man, we get bored to death in five minutes, you know. <laughs> for billions of years, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, ditto everything. All in the same wavelength. Whatever this one says, yes. Whatever that one says, this one says, yes. Can you imagine the monotony of these people living together for billions of years, doing ditto, 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 ditto. <laughs> now, he's got a toy to play with. This father has got a toy to play with. Adam and Eve, he's playing a game of hide and seek. That game I play with my grandchildren. And I don't know whether you do the same. You might do the same. You see, when I go home, my grandchild, three-year-old, he's waiting for me on the doorway. I get out of the car, and I go into the door, open the doorway, he's standing there. He's welcoming me. He's there to welcome me. And I look at the ceiling. I say, Rais, Rais, Tukache, that's my language. He says, where are you? Rais, Rais, Rais is his name. Tukache. She says, Papa, Papa, I'm here, Papa, I'm here. No, I'm not looking, as if I don't hear. I say, Rais, Rais, Tukache, where are you? And the poor child believes that I can't see him. Do you know that? <laughs> so God Almighty wants to play a game, and after billions of years of that monotony, he's got two toys, they Adam and Eve, so he wants to play a game with them. Maybe that, or he didn't know. Maybe he didn't know, or maybe he's playing a game. You tell me, you tell me, you Christian, tell me, what was he doing? So Adam peeps through the bushes. He said, I'm here. <laughs> he said, why do you behave like that? Look, he doesn't know, God doesn't know. Why that guy behaving like that? He said, why do you behave like that? He doesn't know. You say he's all knowing, but he doesn't know why the guy is behaving like that. So he says, no, 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 because I was naked. He said, who told you you were naked? You're not supposed to know. Who told you? He doesn't know. He said, have, have you been eating of the fruit? Look, he doesn't know. This God doesn't know whether this guy, because he had the fruit, and this was the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, now he realized that he's naked. He doesn't know. Poor God. So, he said, have you been eating of the fruit? He said, it's the woman that that gave us to me. She made me to eat the cow, our father. Hmm? He's blaming the woman and blaming Allah. If you didn't give me this woman, I wouldn't be in trouble. You gave me this woman and look what she did to me. She got me into trouble. Blaming Allah and blaming the poor woman. The original of our father, the coward. May Allah forgive me for saying all these things. He wasn't like that. Allah, he wasn't like that. But now, this is what they're telling me. Right. And when God made man, he tells in verse 31, he says, it's very good what he made. Before that, in six days, he made everything. He said, it's good. What he made is good. Masha. Very, 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 very good. Very good. No, he said, good, 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 good. Now when he made Adam and Eve, this is the best of his creation. Allah says, when nakala Allah, when is that we have created you, when nakala Allah in azim, so most certainly we have created man in the best of molds. But now he says, very good. Everything was good, man and woman, very good. But by the time he reaches chapter 6 of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 6, it says, and it repented the Lord that he had made man. He repented the Lord that he had made man and grieved him at his heart. He <laughs> is making this bloody monster. For this monster now, in the year 4000 after Adam, he'll have to go and live in a woman's womb for nine months. Nourished by the menses, mensuration, which is the nourishment of every human child. That will be his food in his mother's womb and he'll come out of the same 
opening like every human child with all the filth and the muck which makes his mother impure for 40 days. That's what the Bible says. She was impure for 40 days. The lubrication. Everybody needs it. So also this God also needed it. And on the eighth day he was circumcised, painfully bleeding and crying. He had to go through all that. You know why? Because he couldn't forgive. He didn't forgive. The man says, I forgot. And this God can't forgive. And the Christians say, he's a loving father in heaven. He's kind, compassionate, merciful. Not like your God. Your God is a tyrant. Your God is Allah is bloodthirsty. Our God is a loving father in heaven. But this loving father in heaven couldn't forgive the man. And for that now he's got to pay the price himself. Go and live in a woman's womb for nine months. And castrate himself there. And then born like any other human child with all the filth and the muck. He's had to go through all that. So he said, he repented the Lord he, that he had made man and grieved him at his heart. You got that? Is that your God? Then chapter, seven, chapter 11, verse 7. Father, Son and Holy Ghost, they're still together in heaven. From there they seen down on earth, Babylon, Babylon, Middle East. They see Babylon. They see, they see a high of activity. <laughs> see, the people are running around. Like sometimes you see on the fast, Video, video, when you put the film on fast. <laughs> Same thing, they see from heaven. There's a lot of hype of activity. People <laughs> running around. And the father doesn't know what's going on. So he's telling his son and the Holy Ghost. He said, let us go down. Let us go down and see what the son of man is doing. This guy here, this bloody rubbish. What is he doing? We want to go and see. So they come down. Father, son and Holy Ghost. They come down from the heaven. And say, hey, this guy here, they discovered that he is discovered now bitumen, bitumen, coal tar. You know, coal tar you use for your roads, coal tar, bitumen. And they discovered how to make bricks. Prior to that, they were building houses with raw bricks. And there's a limit to the height you can go with raw bricks. And with this spit and sand, you know, as plaster. There's a limit to what you can do. Now they discovered bitumen and they learned how to bake bricks so they can put up bigger structures. And they started building a tower. A tower. So the father is terrified. He says, you know, this guy here, he's going to reach us. No, no, that's what the Bible says. That this guy is going to reach us. Father said in Holy Ghost in heaven, you know, the tallest, long, tallest man-made structure on earth is the CN Tower in Toronto. It's worth visiting. If you are in Toronto, go up to the top. There's some small fee. I went up. And from the top I can see motor cars look like cockroaches. Now it's, it's worth experiencing that. But that damn thing, the highest man-made building on earth, hasn't reached the clouds yet. Do you know that? With all your steel and concrete and your technology, you haven't reached the clouds yet in the 20th century. You think with bitumen and big bricks, they'll reach the heavens? This man, you, but the God was frightened. He said, this guy's going to reach us. You know, they're going to come up, up and up, drilling, drilling. And Father, Son and Holy Ghost are relaxed on their couches. And this guy goes down and through his wife, boom, in his buttocks. Hey, this is it. The man has reached it. What the hell is this? Huh? Hey, it's here. Can you imagine? You, you, bloody rubbish. You, the little things. You, the Toronto Tower has made the clouds. And you're going to reach his heaven. Hey, Mars, Jupiter and beyond. With your... You have big bricks and bitumen. So he confused your language. He said, God confused your language. Now, every, prior to that, everybody is speaking the same language. There's unity. Now God confused the language. God confused your language. There's a lana, there's a curse. So now you're speaking Chinese, water. The guy brings sand. The guy is shouting Zulu, sand. He brings blocks. So they couldn't complete the project. You have got that. We are told in the Quran, look. He says, no. He says, Allah gives his, from among his sign, from in ayatihi, inna khalqis samawati wal ardi, is the creation of the heavens and the earth, waqtilafu al sinatikum, and the variation of your languages, walwanikum, and your features. This is a miracle of Allah's creation. Your language is a miracle of Allah's creation. That's what the Quran says. They say, no, it's a curse. Allah's curse, you're talking different languages. I says, your holiness, what are you doing? Come, come, your holiness. Let us see. It says here, the council has also called for the church to have a dialogue with followers of the prophet. 
to have a dialogue with followers of the Prophet. Prophet meaning our Nabi Kareem, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you see that there. I want you to see that in the paper I gave you. Item four. See item four there in the red ink. Four. Right. The council, council in the Roman Catholic Church, has also called for the church to have a dialogue with followers of the Prophet. But when the Pope is saying that, look at me, he said the council has also called for the church to have a dialogue with the followers of the Prophet. He's doing like that, the Pope. You see my fingers? With the followers of the Prophet. I said, Your Holiness, why do you do it like that? Are your fingers itching? No, no. You know why he does that? Because the word prophet is in inverted commas. Can you see that? So you can't say inverted commas. He says the followers of the prophet, meaning inverted commas. You know what it means? Your holiness, you want to have a dialogue. Let's clarify the terms. Let us talk on what you are talking about. Whether we mean the same thing. You said followers of the prophet. What is that for? What is this? What do you mean? What do you mean? What is this wings? What are you are flying? With? You know what it means? What that means? What it means? Come, come, what does it mean? Means is not what I say. This is what people say. Prophet is what people say. I don't believe it. So if you would prophet without that inverted commas, it means these are his words. You can say, well, sir, you said you believe him as a prophet. He said, no, 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 no. The prophet I put in inverted commas. Meaning that's what you people say, prophet, prophet, prophet. I don't say that. These are your words. I'm only quoting. Hadith. Look what the guy is doing. And he wants to have a dialogue. Huh? Then on page 43, again, he does the same thing. The prophet Muhammad, prophet in inverted commas. Twice he puts the word prophet in inverted commas. So why do you do that? You want to have a dialogue. We accept Jesus as one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth with many modern day Christians, including the bishops of the Anglican Church. They don't believe today, and what we believe. We believe that he gave life back to the dead by Allah's permission. He healed those born blind and the lepers by Allah's permission. And you call my prophet, mm -hmm. huh? you call my prophet in inverted commas. Why do you do that? Why don't you accept him as a prophet? Let's talk that. You want to have a dialogue? Let's talk that. This is, you see, I can't accept him as a prophet. Why? Why? You're holding us, why? He said, you see, Muhammad, how many wives? Nine wives? Or eleven? What's so much other? Our Nabi, how many wives did he have? At, the, at one time, at the most? Nine. Right. right. Nine wives. <laughs> I can't accept a man having nine wives, a prophet of God. <laughs> Your holiness, there's something wrong with you. You are blind. You are blind. In your holy book, the Bible. Your Bible says about Solomon, Solomon the wise. It speaks about the wisdom of Solomon, Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines, 1,000 at a time. 1,000. And he's described as the son of God. In the Bible, in your Bible, he's called the son of God with 1,000 wives and concubines. And that doesn't get stuck in your throat. Hmm? And 11 gets stuck in your throat, but you've got double standard. Huh? You've got double standard. Thousand wives and concubines, and so on. No, he's a wise man. What kind of wisdom is this? Can you imagine if he has one every night? It'll take him three years for the first one's turn to come. Do you know that? <laughs> huh? Three years. Every woman is going to wait three years for her second turn. And you call the man wise. Can a man be wise? Holding your wife for three years before he, she gets her turn again. And another one, three years, three years, everyone got to wait three, three years. <laughs> and that doesn't get stuck in your throat. Hmm? But Muhammad's nine wives or eleven wives, they're getting stuck in your throat. You got double standards, your holiness. Come and talk, talk. Oh, you see, he performed no miracles. We start reasoning that the greatest of his miracles. And said, look, I don't see all that. He didn't find the air like a bird, did he? Did he? Did he walk in the water like Jesus? Did he make water into wine? He says, no. But you see, my Jesus did. So Muhammad didn't do all that. So he's disqualified. I said, your holiness, you don't know your book, man. Your Jesus, 
your second part of the Trinity, the second God, number two, God number two, Jesus. He is telling about John the Baptist, Yahya alayhi salam. They call him John the Baptist. He said, among those born of women, he's a human being, among those born of women, there has not risen another greater than John the Baptist. The greatest of the Jewish prophets is John the Baptist, Yahya alayhi salam, according to Jesus, your God. He testifies about John, Yahya alayhi salam, that he is the greatest of the Jewish prophets. And yet he performed no miracles. He performed no miracles. What's wrong with you? And Jesus said, for they, the false prophets, shall arise. For they shall arise many false prophets and false Christ, who will show you great signs and wonders, if it were possible to deceive the very elect. So, prophet, for miracles is no proof that even a man is a man of God or a man of truth. What are you talking about? Come, let us have a dialogue. And I want you, my brothers and sisters, to master these little pieces. Get these tapes, get this book, five pounds each or one, and one free. Five pounds each and one free. And arm yourself with knowledge that you can talk. As the Qari read, Udu ila sabili rabbi kabil hikmati. Invite all to the ways of the Lord with wisdom. Wal mawazatil hasanati. And with beautiful preaching. Wajadil hum billati ahsan. And bring them with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Today's program, but uh, the Shamshad will surely come on the stage. There will be question and answer session following a couple of announcements with Brother Shamshad will surely make. Following that, we will then conclude today's meeting with Doa from Kari Sai. Brother Shamshad. Brothers and sisters, as I mentioned earlier, there is question time, and that happens to be the most interesting part of Shev's meeting. Most interesting time during his talk. So please, if you have any questions, at the ground level, come forward. Sisters, please write your questions and pass them to either end. And the brother will receive it from you and pass it to the Shev for the answer. One important announcement that is about Shea's next program that is not very far from here and it is tomorrow. In Leeds, 12.15 p.m., that is quarter past 12. Tomorrow at Dare al Bay, 35 Hanover Square, and that is in Leeds. 35 Hanover Square, Leeds, tomorrow, quarter past 12. <coughs> now, brothers and sisters, while you're coming forward to present your questions, I would like to draw your attention to the envelopes which you found, which you found on your seats. The contents of the envelopes are very important, but I would like you to, in particular, Pay attention to this leaflet. Sheikh Ahmad Dida's message to you today is Udu Sabil Rabbika Bilhikmi. Call them to the ways of thy Lord with hikmah and beautiful preaching, with wisdom and beautiful preaching. This leaflet outlines IBCI's national Dawah program. I would like you to take part in it. This is a very comprehensive Dava program and it gives you the opportunity of approaching your friends 
neighbors, and whosoever wishes to acquire more information about Islam. But in order to be able to talk to them, you have to have certain knowledge. So now, how do you acquire that knowledge? And here is an opportunity for you, one of opportunity to acquire this book as advertised on the leaflet in Lenolux for $4.99, but here is a one-up opportunity to acquire two, to buy two for the price of one. If you go outside this exit, you will find a display and the store on your way out. If you were to use this exit, then you'll have to walk around and there will be people to guide you where the store is maintained to sell these books. Brothers and sisters, after the questions and answers, please remain seated because, inshallah, we shall conclude this program with a dua, with this application, inshallah. First question. I will not go up the I will not go up the and battle to death. Are we allowed to study? Are we allowed to? Repeat? Are we allowed to study the Quran and Bible to God, being a Muslim? Thank you. My dear brother, you don't have to read the Bible. You don't have to study the Bible. But, I says, but, if you are living in an environment where the people only know one book. Every person you meet is a one-book professor. He will tell you anything you talk, discuss. He will say, whatever you tell him, he says, my Bible says this, my Bible says that. My Bible says this, my Bible says that. And what are you going to say? I don't believe in the Bible, I don't believe in the Bible. My Quran says this, my Quran says that. The guy says, I don't believe in the Quran. What are you going to talk? 